What's up, YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Um, after uh, being in five states in the last three days, traveling um, to various locations, I finally have some free time to work on this uh, DIY um, solar-powered generator. So, as we left off, we had some of the wiring, uh, or we had all of the devices actually, or the components actually mounted, and now it's time to hook up all the wires to make sure everything works. So, first thing I'm going to do is take this uh, AC pigtail that we showed in the last video. It's connected to the inverter, and it is going to go through the switch here and over to the receptacle. So we only actually need the black wire to go to the switch. So, and we don't really need this, um, this shroud um, on the outside because it's all gonna be self-contained inside the box. So I'm going to slit this down a little bit and pull out about a foot worth of this black wire, cut it, and then um, we're going to use that to, basically one side of the black wire is gonna go to the switch and coming off the, the switch will be our little 12 inch piece or so <clears throat> that's going to go down to the receptacle and then the green which is the uh, ground and the white will go down to the receptacle directly. Okay, so I probably should have mentioned earlier what these colors mean. The black wire, and I live in the United States, so this may be different where you live if you live in another country. The black wire is the hot wire, and that's why we want to interrupt the connection with the switch. When you flip off the switch, it breaks the connection between those two terminals and severs the, the hot wire. The white wire is neutral, and the green wire is ground. So green wire goes here. There's uh, on these outlets, there's always a little green grounding wire. So that'll loop around that. These silver colored contacts, you plug the, uh, the neutral or you hook the neutral onto that. And the brass colored ones, you connect the hot wire to. Okay, next we're going to wire the battery terminals to the terminals on the inverter. So for that, I've got some 10 gauge wire. Because it's such a short distance, we don't need anything super crazy. Plus this is only a, a, a 600 watt inverter. So we don't need mega amp wire. 10 gauge will work. And then we've got some, some uh, connectors that we will use to connect them to the smaller, um, the ring terminal basically, um, they're not ring terminals, they're spade I believe, but uh, to connect to these smaller posts on the battery. Alright, so we'll go ahead and test the inverter, turn it on, there's a little power button that you won't be able to see, but we'll hit the switch. It's 
hard to tell because I can't see in the daylight. <laughs> yeah, there's a, uh... yeah, the lights are on, everything's on. So it is on and let's go ahead and turn our switch to the off position and we'll go try to find a AC device so that we can plug in and, and test real quick to button that side of it up. Okay, I grabbed a lamp. Uh, I want to test this with something that's got um, a ground with it, but this will do for now. So um, I've got the switch turned off. The lamp is off, so I'm going to switch that on and switch the lamp on and see what happens. Okay, you may not be able to see that in the daytime, but that light is on. So that's all working. Like I said, I'll, I'll pull out a, a uh, laptop adapter or something like that that's got the grounded prong on it, a three prong connector to test this out later. Uh, also to uh, make sure that the, you know, it's obviously a, a pure sine wave inverter, but make sure that uh, that's working, that we're getting good clean power, that it's not making any funky noises. So that, that, that takes care of that. Um, the only thing left we have to do is to wire up the solar panels, or the solar panel. For that, I've got um, two wires with uh, MC4 connectors on. And all I'm going to do for that is drill a hole through the side and um, have those come through the side. Now the reason that I'm doing that, again, this is just a prototype. Um, I would obviously mount some sort of permanently connected I don't know that there is an MC4 connector that you can um, kind of flush mount on uh, the exterior of an enclosure like this. I'll have to look into that, but for now this will work. MC4 connectors are waterproof, but again, this I'm not really worried about waterproofing this particular prototype right now. <laughs> but there may be other types of uh, you know receptacles that you can mount to um, the exterior of an enclosure. Uh, that will be better for plugging and unplugging a solar panel so that this is truly portable It's not hardwired in or anything like that. You can take off the solar panel. You can take everything apart So that's kind of the goal. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put the face plates on these to protect us from electrocution and uh, And then we'll get wiring those uh, two MC4 connectors to the charge controller and then we're gonna wire the charge controller to um, Actually no, we're we're yeah, we're gonna ch we're gonna wire the charge controller to the battery. Sorry, we're, I, I was thinking about the inverter. We're not wiring the inverter to the charge controller. So solar panel will come in, go to the charge controller. From the charge controller, it will go to the battery, and that will complete our wiring. Okay, so for the la very last wires, um, we've got these. These are actually just 12 gauge um, wire, but it doesn't matter. Um, we're not. We're only gonna be producing 100 watts out of this solar panel, obviously. So that's the most that's going to be going from the charger controller down there <coughs> over to the battery. So uh, we probably could have even used smaller wire than that, but I just had this laying around. So um, we're going to run that <coughs> again from the charge controller. I've already got the solar panel wires are on the far left or the top of the video. Um, the battery wires are in the middle, which is what we're going to be wiring now and the load side on the bottom or the right side is not going to be used. Okay, so here's what it looks like when it is plugged in. Everything is connected. These uh, little yellow um, spade terminals are a little bit too big for the, the, uh, the spaces there, but I made it fit. And uh, so we've got the, bat the lights are on on the battery, so it's showing, you know, it's about half charged. And so the only thing left to do is we've got the uh, the wires hanging out on the side. Again, I'll drill a hole later. That's not super critical to the video. But uh, we've got these MC4 connectors hanging out here. So all we need to do is connect it to the solar panel, which is off camera. But I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll check and make sure that everything's working and plug in a grounded three-prong type of a power source and see how it works. Okay, I pulled out my jumbo 
laptop, which happens to have a three-prong connector and pulls a lot of wattage. So that'll be a good test. Um, so we connected the solar panel and now the green charge light is on. So that's working. And like I said, we've got this <coughs> laptop plugged in, but we have not flipped the switch. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And hopefully we can see this in the daylight. Yeah, there it is. Charging light is on. So, and then we'll make sure that the adapter converter is not making any funky noises. I don't hear anything. Usually if you plug these into a, a, a modified sine wave inverter, they'll, they'll either heat up really fast, um, kind of overheat, or they'll uh, make buzzing or clicking sounds. So I don't, I don't hear any of that, um, and it's not hot. So anyway, that's going to conclude it for this video. Got all the wiring, everything's working beautifully. Next time we will put on the handle finally on the front, and we will devise a lid. Still haven't figured that out, so i got to put some t thought into that. But some sort of lid that will allow the solar panel to be on top and hinged on top to close this thing up. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.